Welcome back to Lunchroom Express. I'm Laura Jaquino. You're watching Ticker. LinkedIn can't claim 2020 vision on the jobs front, but it certainly has the data to determine jobs in highest demand. The social network has shown tech-related roles as dominating the market in terms of fastest growing demand for 2020. The top 15 high growth job titles are all tech-related with AI specialists leading the way. The list is topped by jobs requiring a delicate balance of soft and hard skills or employees that can bridge the gap between old economy and new industry. And on that note, we're very lucky today to be joined by marketing consultant Nathaniel Bibby of Bibby Consulting Group. Nathaniel actually just won the best marketer on LinkedIn for the APAC region, which is crazy to think, right? Like out of everyone in Asia Pacific, you've been ranked the best marketer. So we're so fortunate to have you in the studio with us today. It's a pre pleasure to be here. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much. So tell us about the marketing trends that you're seeing on LinkedIn. We just heard about the jobs trends. Now, it would be great to get your view on what's happening with marketing on LinkedIn. Sure. Well, when I started out in LinkedIn marketing, there was only 200 content creators in the whole world. Richard Branson, Tony Robbins, I wasn't one of them. And it's only in the last few years that it's become a content platform. And over the past 12 months, we've seen session time, the amount of time that people actually spend on the platform has tripled. So not only is it growing at two members every single second, but people are also spending three times as much time on the platform as well. Fastest growing social network? I believe so. And the one for with- For B2B. Yeah, absolutely. And the one with the most organic reach, you know, we can't um, reach thousands and thousands of people without investing in, you know, on Facebook and, and platforms like that. They've kind of had their run, whereas LinkedIn has still got a huge amount of organic reach. Yeah, so tell me about the organic reach on LinkedIn, because I understand that you got to where you are without actually spending much or spending anything. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, it's interesting when we had the uh, Social Media Marketing Awards and they were going through all of the finalists for the LinkedIn Marketer of the Year, I'm thinking they would have spent hundred thousands, maybe millions, hundreds of thousands, and then to me, you spent absolutely nothing. But if you know how to uh, work the algorithm, you can get more exposure and more attention without using ads on LinkedIn. How do we work the algorithm? <laughs> well, it's, How do we beat the algorithm? Help us. It, LinkedIn's objective is to give its users a good experience. And so it wants to serve you content, which you're going to be interested in. So if you add value through content and you have a uh, controlled network and you get engagement fast, you're going to get thousands and thousands of um, reach. It's very different to like um, Instagram, for example, where like if I want to connect with you, I follow you, right? And if I follow you, it's a bit weird like if I contact you and say, hey, let's have a telephone call or catch up. Whereas on LinkedIn, it's a bit different. You send a connection request, somebody can accept, and then it's almost like implied consent that you're part of each other's network now. Um, so I think from a, uh, from a relationships perspective, LinkedIn is a very, very powerful tool. So it's like a purpose-built connection tool where there's inherent value when you connect with people, or so there should be, and that's how the connection. That's how you actually manage to beat the algorithm and get ahead on LinkedIn. Then. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of what we do for our clients is behind the scenes. It's not to do with content. Content's a huge opportunity, but that's not all LinkedIn is for. Um, if you direct message people, you can get appointments, and uh, most people would have sales letters in their LinkedIn inbox, right? but they seem spammy because they're all about the person sending it. So if I write you a message and say, hey, you know, I can get you more leads through LinkedIn than you could possibly imagine you should really you know, do business with me, it'd be a bit stupid because I don't know if you want more leads. You know, I don't know if you have the problem that I solve yet. So if I just message you and you know, show interest in you, it's not about me, that's when you actually start to build relationships. And on the public side of LinkedIn, so that's the DM side or the private side behind the scenes, but yeah, on the public yeah. side, <laughs> is it more about storytelling than sales as well? Because when people are just posting a sales pitch, I feel like you just, your eyes glaze over, don't you? Absolutely, it's all about adding value. It's a little bit like if I gave you a gift, but I'd like, okay, I'm gonna give you this gift, but there's an expectation that you're gonna give me a gift back it kind of loses its value. You've just got to give and start helping. Most people are on social media to extract value out of the platform. It's a game changer when you're the one that's actually dumping value into the platform. Mm -hmm. So what are the biggest trends in content marketing that you're seeing? Well, I thought, people at home who don't know much about content marketing, maybe give us your elevator pitch on what it is. Well, co content marketing is basically like educating the consumer before they even really know that they have a need. So like if you're going on holiday in Iceland, for example, and you want to research like how cold it is and what you should wear and what you should bring, and some hotel is posting content about all those things, 
the chances are that if you get value from them, there's a good chance you'll stay at that hotel. And that's what's happening online with blogs and now with social media. The mistakes that a lot of content marketers make is they use social media as distribution for like their blog content instead of actually communicating contextually on the platform itself. Um, and that's a big mistake because what works on LinkedIn, you know, doesn't work on Instagram and, and Facebook. They're all very different environments. People are there for different reasons. So also, would you say that rather than using a LinkedIn as like a distribution channel as a content marketer, would it be better from like an acquisition point of view and to actually generate leads or like find the leads? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you define a problem that your prospect has better than they can, they will automatically assume that you have the solution. And so they'll contact you. You don't actually have to have a call to action. It's very different to traditional forms of marketing, social media, because we never really had a social marketing mechanism before. So we always had call to action. You go to a website, it's like fill in this form, do this, do that. But this is a social environment. They don't know that they have a need yet. So you actually have to build a relationship so you can have a conversation with them. And then conversations build relationships, relationships lead to sales. Lead generation on is, uh, LinkedIn's the most powerful tool that I've come across in my 20 years in digital marketing uh, for lead generation in business to business, without a doubt. And that's incredible. So you have experience in human behavior, in sales, in content. Can you talk us through your experience leading up to this point? You've been working across these industries for 20 years, like you just said. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, when I started on LinkedIn, I was targeting cosmetic surgeons, right? And so they got practice managers that couldn't get past the the um, practice manager, when I knocked on their doors, tried phoning them, and then contacted them on LinkedIn. So I contact 10, I got six responses, I had four meetings, and I make one sale, but it's the ideal client, you know? So the next week I did 20, and I made two sales, and I delegated it to an assistant, and I grew my business relatively fast, and then I thought, well, if I can delegate it to an assistant, why can't businesses then delegate it to me? So we were the first LinkedIn lead generation agency in Australia. I think we're more, we were more like telemarketing. I think we disrupted the telemarketing industry, because you know, cold calling is effective about 1% of the time now. Whereas on LinkedIn, as long as you get the message right and it's targeted, it's effective 15, 30%, 40%, depending on your audience. So templated pitches, but equally they need to be targeted and tweaked, right? Like you can't just like fire away 10 different pitches unsolicited to all these companies on LinkedIn and expect results. That's right, yeah. And so a bit niching becomes important. You know, if a client says to me, um, who do you target? Well, anyone with money or like, you know, any business owner. You can't be specific enough with a template for that to be effective. So the only way that they manage to send these templates out, if you use like email, for example, um, which is a, you know, when you pay to message someone, is they're just talking about themselves. That's why they can send it to everyone because they're talking about themselves. Whereas if you're showing interest in the other person, it needs to be in a certain industry. It needs to be a certain job title. It needs to be in a certain location so that you can, you know, be specific. And also we always target people that have mutual connections. So if you know the same people I do, what's the chances of you telling me to piss off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot less anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so why plastic surgeons to begin with? Why did you target them? Why was there an interest in that industry? Great question. So I just moved into online marketing after real estate and I just said to my boss, I said, what's the best client in online marketing? And he's like, plastic surgeons, man. He's like, you know, they always need new clients. They know nothing about marketing. They've got loads of money and they're the best clients we could possibly get. So all the other sales people in the company were being reactive. They were getting the leads that were given to them off Google or whatever, whereas I was being proactive and I was getting the ideal client. So every time I made a sale, it was like 20 grand, 25 grand for a website, whereas the other guys were selling websites for like three or four grand to, you know, to mm. everyone in the inquiry. Still focusing on that industry? Have you specialized no, no. in other industries more so now? Yeah, and since I've started LinkedIn marketing, it's all business to business. So we don't deal with the surgeons anymore. But um, for a while there, I was the specialist in online marketing in the medical industry, just purely because I had so many connections on LinkedIn in that area. Mm. Mm. Medical sales, that's a pretty lucrative industry to be in anyway, isn't it? It is, yeah. So what's next then? What are the lucrative industries for? Obviously, we'd we don't want to steal business away from you and I don't think anyone will be able to do that successfully because you are the top marketer in the region. But for people that are looking for lucrative industries or sectors to target as a marketer, where should they be, where should they be focused on? Well, I think that the days of interrupting people are over. Like you need to be invited to interrupt people these days. It's not interrupting, is it? But like on LinkedIn, we're seeing the best results at the moment with startups that are doing capital raising. So you can like raise money through targeting investors on LinkedIn extremely well. And also like, you know, talk about um, 
people trying to take business off me. I'm actually empowering digital agencies to offer LinkedIn marketing by white labeling my products. So I've got um, selected someone in WA, we've got somebody in Sydney now, somebody in Melbourne, and I'm looking for people in the other cities in Singapore as well to distribute our service to, to um, the clients locally. Because at the end of the day, we can focus on what we're good at, which is getting results. And um, you know they can build a better relationship with their clients based on results. Partnering with agencies or partnering with sole traders? Agencies, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah no, agencies, yeah. So would the goal be to ultimately acquire agencies along the way, or just go about this like a partnership well, route? It, it's only one service. You know, I'm not interested in doing like Facebook marketing or SEO or anything else unless I'm going to be the best at it. Because I think, well, the market's already served. Unless there's something new that pops up, I'm going to be um, specialising on what's most effective. So tomorrow, if door knocking becomes more effective than LinkedIn, all my team will be out knocking on doors, no question. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen though. <laughs> Unless we keep seeing this surge of car videos on LinkedIn, there's a lot of them, isn't there? And there is a lot of pretty crappy content on LinkedIn these days, I have to say. And you're obviously trying to change that with your services. Well, it, it comes down to your network. So if you're connected to, to people that are posting crap content, you're gonna see crap content on LinkedIn. So I think what most people do is they, sit there and they accept a connection request or they reject and they're like, who do I accept, who do I reject? But not many are actually being proactive and saying, these are the guys I want in my, in my connections, I'm gonna reach out and connect with them. And that's when you become, like you have a really targeted That's audience. an interesting point of view though. So if you've connected with someone in a business capacity and in real life, but then you see them on LinkedIn and you think, oh, I don't, they've sent you a friend request or a LinkedIn request and you don't really wanna connect with them. Is it rude to decline them and just leave them in the following section of your network so they can just follow your content but they're not actually a personal connection? Well, everyone's got a different opinion on that. Like in my opinion, you know, it's not like you're not going to get alerted that they haven't um, connected with you. And, and from my perspective, being in sales, it's a numbers game, you know, and, and it's good numbers. Like if I send 100 connection requests on average, 50% will accept. So of course, there's always going to be people that don't but we don't really focus on them. We focus on the ones that do want um, to, to have a relationship with us because you, you can't serve everyone. You know, you just want to help the people that really have the problem that you solve. How about this trend towards um, people posting on their LinkedIn um, and actually creating newsletters off the back of that so you can subscribe to their LinkedIn posts? Have you seen much success with that or what do you recommend about that? Because I've seen an influx of that as well over the last few weeks where people, you know, I'm, my name's Laura and I might have Laura's letter on my LinkedIn and people can subscribe. Yeah, cool. It's awesome. I mean, it's LinkedIn have rolled it out in a very strange way. Like not everyone's got access to it. I don't have access to it yet. So they've like got beta testers and all that sort of stuff and they've got LinkedIn events, which is so powerful as well. But you're always gonna be at mercy of the platform when you're doing that stuff. You do wanna like, I think you need to own your, like if LinkedIn goes tomorrow, will you have an audience? It's quite important. So I, I drive people off of LinkedIn to a lead magnet, like whether it's on a landing page or a website. So I've got their email details and mm -hmm. then you can promote YouTube videos. And which also. has parallels with that direct to consumer model that we're seeing in retail as well. And, and pulling the conversation offline, like I do a lot of offline events, you know, and that's where I build a deeper relationship with my audience. Most content creators don't do that. So hybrid, bricks and clicks, online, offline. Yeah, it's about, it's about relationships. It's not about followers, you know? People, people forget that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to have you in the studio and picking your brain on all things LinkedIn. It was awesome to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Well